Kusekube Kusekube Kega sitele Kega sitele in this not so sad time because we are here to celebrate the life of Umawa. We are about this wonderful life that Imam Linda lived. So I'm going to only ask that you guys please stand as we start this service.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you can take your seats. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I greet you all this morning in the wonderful and blameless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am Minister Nati. I will be uh, the MC uh, this morning as we are sending our lovely mother, sister, daughter, um, and Pastor Linda Ngumalo. Uh, it's a homecoming, hallelujah. She's going, she, she's already at home, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Um, so just a few uh, um, house rules. Uh, please switch off your phones or put them at least on silent, hallelujah. Um, second to that, uh, the bathrooms, if you go out, they'll be on your left opposite the, the coffee, cafe, coffee shop. They'll be there. Uh, there'll be the bathrooms. And then also to the speakers, hallelujah, because of time. When you see me stand up and come on stage, please know that your time is up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, so having said that, I would like to call upon uh, Minister Nezo Sobegwa to then just open up uh, in prayer. Hallelujah. And then just straight after that, we'll then have a song uh, from the worship team. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Shall we bow our heads and close our eyes. King of glory, Father in heaven, wonderful counselor, Holy Spirit, we are gathered here before you this morning. Mighty God, gathered king of glory to form a God of honor of our own on this side of glory as we celebrate the life of this daughter, mother, your general, your child, your servant. Our hearts are here, you who formed us. Touch each and every heart, O oh God. Touch each and every heart, King of glory. Heal whom you will. Deliver whom you will. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray your comfort upon the families. We pray your comfort upon friends, colleagues, children, in the mighty name of Jesus. By your word, we had come unto this earth, and by your word, we join you in heaven. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod, O God, and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thereonafter, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. 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 I just want to greet you all saints again. I greet you all this morning. I just want to greet the Ngomalo family, the Ngosi family, who are here with us uh, this morning. I just want to greet you all again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Nikona Bangwell. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a joyous time. Hallelujah. For to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, amen. Amen. Uh, in this time, I would like to call up our first speaker this morning, which will be uh, Pamela Ndaba and Martha Ngoya. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, if they could uh, come up and uh, speak. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. was our classmate and before we speak we'd just like to sing the school song that she loved so much and sang with such gusto she did a lot of things with gusto but she sang the school song with gusto we'll try to get through it without falling apart we stand for god and for his glory, the Lord supreme and God of all. And to our Queen, Mother of Mercy, we will be faithful one and all. Our school, its staff and pupils, to her we consecrate and all our work and recreation unto her name we dedicate and all our work and recreation unto her name we dedicate gentlemen, friends and family, we gather here today to celebrate the life and honor the memory of a remarkable woman who touched our lives in more ways than we can express. As we remember our dear friend, Linda Lynn, let us reflect on the beautiful person she was and the profound impact she had on all who knew her. Throughout her journey from primary through high school, a friend stood out with her gentle spirit and soft-spoken manner. Her gentle yet naughty laughter was infectious and it brought joy to our hearts. In those school days, she had an impeccable sense of style. On civics day, or as we fondly called it on CV's day, she would effortlessly be the best dressed among us with her innate elegance. She embodied both grace and fashion, leaving an indelible impression on us all. But our memories re reach far beyond the classroom. We shared mischievous moments that often led us to irritate not only the nuns who guided us, but our parents as well. Those times of youthful rebellion brought us closer together forging bonds of friendship that would last a lifetime. After our school years, our lives took different paths. Our beloved friend embarked on a journey filled with love, challenges, and triumphs. She married and was blessed with four beautiful children. Today, 
As we bid farewell to our dear friend, let us remember her for the vibrant spirit she embodied. Let us cherish the memories of laughter, mischief, and shared experiences that have shaped us into the individuals we are today. Her legacy lives on through the lives she touched, the love she shared, and the faith she nurtured. Though our hearts ache with the loss of her physical presence, let us find solace in knowing that she is now at peace, her spirit forever illuminated in our hearts. As we say our goodbyes, let us also celebrate the beautiful life she lived and honor her memory by embracing the values she held dear, love, compassion, and unwavering faith. Rest in peace, dear friend. Your laughter will forever echo in our hearts and your spirit will guide us in our journey ahead. Thank you for the gift of your friendship and the love you shared so generously. You will be deeply missed, but never forgot. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. They will rest from their labor, from their deeds will follow them. This is Revelations chapter 14, verse 13. In this scripture, we find solace and assurance in the promise of eternal rest and enduring impact of a life lived in the Lord. It speaks of a heavenly voice affirming that they will find rest from their labor and their deeds will continue to resonate and have an impact even after they are gone. Linda, who now rests in the loving embrace of the Lord, exemplified the scripture through her tireless efforts and selfless service. She dedicated her life to the ministry, spreading love, hope, and faith to all who crossed her path. Her deeds were not in vain. They touched countless lives and the echoes of her compassion and devotion will continue to inspire and guide many. As we bid farewell to our beloved Linda, let us take solace in the knowledge that she has found eternal rest and that her legacy lives on. The seeds she planted, the lives she touched, and the love she shared will continue to bear fruit, nurturing hearts and souls of those who follow in her footsteps. In her memory, let us carry a spirit of unwavering faith, her commitment to serving others, and her dedication to the ministry. May we be inspired by her example, finding strength in the knowledge of her deeds will continue to guide and bless. In closing, May we find solace in the words of Revelation 14, 13, knowing that our beloved friend rests in eternal peace, her labor rewarded, and her deeds echoing through time. May a soul find rest, and may we, the fortunate recipients of her friendship and love, be inspired to live a life that reflects the grace and compassion she embodied. Thank you, dear friend, for the gift of your presence, your love, and your friendship. Rest in peace, knowing that you are deeply cherished and your memory will forever be etched in our heart. It is so befitting that we lay you to rest on this woman's day. Rest in peace, dear friend. Hallelujah. Yeah, they're putting me under so much pressure because I can't sing. So now I don't know whether to lead or... Hey, um, um, You know, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed because I don't know my primary school song. So now I'm trying to think. Because I'm 18. Um, yeah, I think I need to go back and see what my primary school song was. Um, but funny enough, you know, for all the years I've known Mam Linda, believe it or not, 
I have never heard her sing. I have never, I'm surprised when they say she used to sing, I have never heard her sing. Yeah, it's surprising. Good to meet you, but yeah. Um, uh, in this time, we will play a short video, and then straight after that, we'll have then uh, Bonolo Smith come up, um, speak on behalf of uh, Jubilee and women. Couldn't have captured it better. Uh, this is the person she was. She was always so full of joy and energy, and she'd bring uh, light and life to everyone around her. Hallelujah. So that's just one of five videos we'll share this morning. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to call upon uh, Mrs. Bonolo Smith. Uh, she comes up to the podium. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesuki Morena. I say those words because every time my mom went up to stage to speak, that is exactly what she said. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesu Kimorena, amen. I come as one this morning. I'm standing with, my, where's my bodyguard now? Um, I'm standing this morning as Bonola Smith. Um, I was um, uh, Mamlinda, one of Mamlinda's daughters, part of the Jubilee leadership. And um, I've been asked this morning to speak about um, and just say a few words about our mother, amen. And this morning, I, I want to say this is a very difficult task. It's a heavy task because how do you talk about such a phenomenal woman? What do you say um, about such a great, such a spiritual giant, such a world changer, such a leader? What do you say? But I'll make an attempt this morning, and I pray that um, you know it touches your hearts, and I pray that you really truly see the woman that we were blessed with as a ministry, but also as women, as young women, as emerging women in this ministry. With that, I'd like to also invite um, anyone who's been part of Women, which is the woman we used to gather on a Monday, and I'm buying time so that you can dance and you can join me. Um, but what, what used to happen every Monday is we used to gather um, at a ministry called Move, and I saw God Move as a testimony. It is where we each thought about how we saw God move in our lives. And we would stand, hey? We would stand. If there were 20 people, we would stand until the last person had shared that I saw God move. And I believe as I share a few words today, this is our I saw God move. This is our I saw God move. We saw God move through the time she gave us, Mom Linda. That is an major I saw God move for us. This morning, I, I'd like to talk about some of the hats our mother wore. And, you know, personally, 
mom Linda was a pillar of strength. She, I got married at 24, going on 25. <laughs> and um, mom Linda and Pastor Reggie played such an instrumental role in both um, mine and Ricardo's life. And, you know, they officiated, they counseled us. And at no point did they say, are you mad? Like, what are you doing <laughs> at this age? Because they saw God's purpose through our union. They saw God's purpose through our love. And I think their love has been an inspiration to many of us in our ministry and our church. And I just wanted to share that because I think any one of us could stand up here and talk about the direct impact that Mum Linda had on our lives. But what I'd like to share right now is from the book of Proverbs 31 verses 10. And I think I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this woman because we encountered a real life Proverbs 31 woman during the time that we had with Mom Linda. But this is a Proverbs 31 woman with a bit of Tupac in her. Do you know what I mean when I say that? We encountered a Proverbs 31 with a bit of Tupac. And that is our mother who shook us, who taught us, who planted so many seeds in us, who inspired us. And I'm going to read from the text. I'm going to read all of it. Because each and every one of these lines in this piece of text really represents the, the woman she was. And oftentimes, you know, when we think about the Proverbs 31 woman, it's often associated maybe with meekness. Maybe, you know, someone who just does what they told. Um, but I think there's so much we can learn about the Proverbs 31 woman through the Proverbs 31 woman we saw in Mam Linda, the multi-dimensional woman. Mam Linda was not one thing, and she taught us to pursue more than one thing, to be more than one thing. And so I'll begin, and, and, and it reads as epilogue, the wife of noble character. And we know that an epilogue is the final chapter and this was the final chapter of Proverbs. And perhaps it's a way, um, metaphorically, thinking about Mamlinda's final chapter, thinking about Mamlinda's life. Epilogues really describe and bring about information about characters and text and stories. And perhaps as I read it, I'd love for us to reflect on this character that we encountered in Mamlinda. A wife of noble character, who can find? She's worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. And, gr and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She's clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, 
but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. This is the wife of noble character. And in each and every one of these lines, we see a wife. Mamlinda in our ministry was an incredible wife to our father. We called her moms, mommy, mother, my mother, my mother. Everyone had a name for her, an affectionate term for her. She was a mother. She was a pillar. There's nothing you couldn't go to Mom Linda with. I heard this week many people talking about how Mom Linda wiped away many tears. She was there in some of the most difficult moments, but she was there in some of the happiest moments too. In fact, sometimes before you even went to her, you processed and knew what she would say, and then sometimes you got your answer before you went to Mom Linda. That was Mom Linda, her wisdom. We hear about wisdom in this text. Mom Linda was a huge pillar to our ministry. She often had wise instruction, always had wise instruction. She corrected us. Sometimes you don't want to hear it, but she corrected us and she soothed us. She was the strength of our ministry. And I believe that even though we have lost a mother in her, God's strength will continue to live in our ministry. God will strengthen us. God will strengthen Umfundisi Pops in the work that is to be done through Jubilee. We had some beautiful moments with our mother who loved each. She had a way of loving each and every person who walked into that door at Jubilee. Whether she knew you for long, whether she just met you, she embraced you with so much love. And I think we can all be inspired by someone who doesn't look at you and size you up and think she loved each and every single person who walked through that door. There's something about spiritual mothers and how they become midwives, spiritual midwives to your calling, to your purpose. And I think if you asked each and every person who's walked through those doors, who's encountered her, they will talk about the spiritual midwife that Mamilo was. She made sure that you knew who you were in Christ. She made sure that if that wasn't a question for you, if, that's, if that wasn't something you thought about, you thought about it. There was a song that she loved by Sinach, I Know Who I Am, and I think we all know it. Um, you know, and, and it talks about knowing who I am. You know, and when you encountered her, you, you had to go think about who am I? Here is a woman who knows who she is, who am I? And she encouraged that. And when it came to the woman's ministry, I think this is a journey that she had started many years ago, even before Jubilee. This is a ministry that she had birthed, she had walk, walked with many women. And this ministry was exactly a place where many of us birthed our spiritual gifts, birthed our purposes, began to know who we were, grappled with our characters, some of the lessons, you know, a woman, the cutoff time was nine o'clock. Announcements on Sunday was that woman starts half past six, uh, ends at nine. There'd always be this shady emphasis, you know, from whoever was doing the announcement. It was often Minister Nati. And, um, <laughs> but we knew that there was that extra time, right? Uh, unofficially, sometimes it would end at one, 1 a.m., um, but because we were talking about the things of the Lord, you lost track of time. Because it was as if we were all on the operator's table, as if we were all going through some spiritual operation where our characters, our hearts were being dissected. We were reflecting on who God says we are. I mean, there were many teachings, whether it was heart set, mindset, skill set, knowing who we are, offense, 
emotional intelligence. I'm hearing people who weren't at women fagazing behind me. I'm just like, how do you know? <laughs> but um, everyone knew, right, that we were being fed spiritual food that was going to accelerate our growth. And I think before the man of God comes before um, <laughs> me to the stage, I just want to say, you know, Mom Linda birthed this I Saw God Move ministry, which I think will be one of the legacies, one of the things that she will be known for, she will be remembered for. It came in a form of, of a book um, as well, so that I Saw God Move, um, which we did, which each person used to testify at the beginning of women, then became a book, a beautiful book, filled with testimonies compiled by, Mom, by Mom Linda and some of the women in the ministry and other women. And it is a movement. I want to say it's, it's not a coincidence that today is 9th of August, right? Women's Day in this country. It, it's not by mistake that we're laying to rest such a giant because this, this giant imparted, changed, shifted, impacted so many women and generations to come of women. And we stand here feeling a huge sense of loss, but we also stand here knowing what she planted in us. We stand here knowing that the work must continue. We stand here knowing that because we know who we are, because we know who Christ says we are, we can continue to be champions for the kingdom. Amen. Mawatle Pelo, Montati, Didi, you have sisters, you have brothers at Jubilee. We will always be with you. We will walk with you. You can call us at any point in time. We are here with you. You have sisters, you have brothers at Jubilee. Pops, Sisonke, as you would say, we are with you. But we know that we must continue the work. We must continue the work because Mam Linda ran her race. She finished her race. She showed us what it means to finish a race. We were blessed to love you. We were blessed to know you. We were blessed to be taught by you, to be impacted by you, to be encouraged by you. Thank you for the life that you gave so selflessly. Thank you to you as a family for sharing Umama with us. You shared her so selflessly with us. And for that, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you so much, worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, if there's one thing, my mother, I know she couldn't sing, but one thing she could do was dance. Yeah, no, Gankos was a Lupanzula. Yeah, no, she would put you to shame, eh? Uh, especially Magdali Quieto. Yo, 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 yo. I know, no, no. So, I'm from Sonja and Loshama get down. Um, but yeah, she could dance. She could really, really dance. Um, amen. Uh, in this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Nkosi family speaker, uh, Upapa Molerane. Hallelujah. Amen. My Setuze. Angasugum. Hallelujah. Amen. asking for the spirit of God to control me. I should not control the spirit of God. To the bereaved family, the Ngozi family, the Ngumalo family, the Mamabolo family, Brothers and sisters, friends and ladies and gentlemen, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The only name that we are given under heaven whereby we might be saved. It is a great honor for me to stand before this august body of believers to deliver a word of condolence to the previously mentioned families. If I cry don't say Molorani is weak. And when I don't cry, don't say Molorani is strong. It's a paradox. In 1859, a man by the name of Charles Dickens published a book called A Tale of Two Cities. I am going to talk about the tale of two families. The Nkosi family and the Mulorani family. I met Henry Zueli Nkosi in 1965-66, somewhere there by. And I met Hen I met Ivy Dineo Nkosi near Mamabulo. Somewhere there by. And you have been together ever since. In 1966, Mrs. Musala produced a play, the operator, Henry Zelinkosi and Harrison Mahalifa were the two tenors. In this play, Her Majesty the Pinafore. Henry was looking about and he saw 
this beautiful, vivacious girl. You know, it's amazing. During those times, Henry was a class or two above us. I was in class with Ivy. And he swept Ivy off her feet. I went with Ivy. I'm coming here. Don't worry, I'm coming. I went with Ivy to college where we trained as teachers. There I met my one, my late one, who I also swept off her feet. <laughs> the Nkosis and the Moloranis have been together ever since. When Henry married Ivy, the Moloranis were there. When I married my late, the Henry and Kosi and Ivy were there. When this Sibongile was born, we were there. It was a girl. When we got our first son, the Henrys and the Kosis were there. Boy, girl. When Henry and Ivy got a boy, go, them, we were there. When we got a daughter, they were there. <laughs> we were, we were fulfilling the commission. Be fruitful and multiply. So, so you can see it was a boy, girl, it was a girl, boy, it was a draw. Now we had to go for penalty shootout to determine the winner in this commission. Nkosi Gute The Muldoranis Kateho, it was a draw. I saw Sibongile. Ilimwana wale seya. Aivi amuzere. Remo tabeze. Today, we are laying Sibongile Linda to rest when we had hoped that she will bury us. There are similarities in these families. When I buried my late wife, the Ngosis, were there. This is a friendship made in heaven. It's not a friendship yantitofo. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. But there is a friend that sticketh better than a brother. There was a time when I and my wife, my late wife, went through a financial rough patch. There was not even a morsel in the house. Ivy comes with a boot full of groceries. 
When days are dark, friends are few. Let me come to Sibungu. Happy Women's Day. But there is nothing happy about it today. The Bible says at the death of Lazarus when he went to, to Lazarus' home, and it says, it says that, and, and, and Jesus wept. So, so weeping is not a new thing, particularly, particularly when there's an occasion like this. The Ngosi family, the Ngumalo family, the mama, you, you are allowed to cry. But don't cry like people who have no hope. There is hope. There is hope of resurrection. Jesus comes to Jairus' house. The young damsel was declared dead. He says, no, the damsel is not dead, but she sleepeth. The Bible describes death as sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye. May God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Mzalwane, be there. The importance of being there. You can spend your money anywhere, uh, but time you can never get back. Be there, hallelujah, uh, amen. Uh, we will have then the next video, and then afterwards, Tlalu Mamsi Zagela to come up uh, to speak for the Ngomalo family again. Since uh, so, Puma 11, so Ngayatela, Ngukulu is Toba, is cut, hallelujah, amen. Uh, could I have the next video?
Ngia bingelele kamen ga Jesu. Angaz no mia pila ile. Mia pila. Aing shila. Ngia bingelele kamen ga Jesu. Is also gay, Lila, Yashulega and was in Ashulega Dala, Ogutin in Bizu squeeze and over in the Baga squeeze a lane in King in Ganyabanti Tifiga, Ilogi squeeze Bashu pago skona ngazi skona ukuthi kushuthi ni kama lile langazi. Bashu page futko na mabenga ba na mahipsa makulu sebenza ganje nanchi. Umuntu ebe sense ebe se tabang ukuthi se choli off no ukuthi se choli pension. Kulega dayenza se fanele ke manje usqueeze usqueeze. Gitan do go to lead as Angabo squeeze a bit as Angabo squeeze. Gimme Ubum than a sekaya for two shat in last born your sekaya. Bing him jail and eat it. We first born one goes down to my last born. He bores a him. Abu yang sun tu zele ati no munga ba ipos kota lo mama kso wako si zo banga lo mama ses bangu ba wam ang sun tu zatu ma wam pelalo ige 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 it ige ige ngu mama mu o aku mama na ngu le tropen la panu kulu mesingis na ngu le tropen haibo ni yam unko unko luang busi sanje ngaloko so beti ma ifige le besplenda kamnandi. So we really enjoyed in life, no Linda. I was there. 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 I Paisa ba paisa. Go tungu tungu luam si zage waba no tatu abongi ne matulwe. Go ba nyaku kula na amen. Yen kusule tile gistom be go tage ni zizu lulonalti. Go ba sfuni tama. Ang peganga unde nwagi tuko tang pegeni. Ama partner ayi tama. So nyaku kilisha na usengine na ngati uyaznai. Manju linda wasuru wa balega kakulu ngolinda aga ngafunu mbonis ngo uyaznai nyaku kulana. Wavele wang 32 feet kodwa waba ismanga uguti linda maese kamuga ngabona kutlinda. Ya ngezu kutumo ya wamu uba at peace. Futu wangena wafita ayubonge batandigayo. Nizo shoma mko siniabong, siniabong abwengo mani, babungo siniabong. Nisukulsele lumtwana intulinde be yogi tisi bona gulente ni yio. Eh abazal ayen kulisi sabantwana ngendele right, because ngeke ba pelele la ushala kona, kona la be ya kona, ikoni intaba zoeves angapande, i universe years of fagaza, mumtwana mkulisi. Siabonga mamkos no babungos. 
Yo, besine diamond. I besine diamond. Utula. Bengtanda nje inda yiyo utula. Yazi wazi peace. Yazi voice ya mina ke mpenga na matimotu nga kulu. Manje, kubana ne. Ya, nginyanga si kozo. Sa solo anje. Na uonga bate rutora matimotu. Ya, so, ingu shoye ke batandika sebe ya nkosha. Kota kona nfiga manje. So, see a bong a kakulo, see a bong a kakulo, Angina next in Jumbelela. Angina Bana Molinda. It is Yami Ita Bile in Mele because I was still waiting for more. So Niabong, I'm done Sekai, Bana Lady Mutu, who's a figure in the Mutu Umfana, as I figure to the stage, Fanny that came to Mama Lubaba and Abadana Babu, as I just figure with no face. For Fenetia, what they have over Nant. So Kululega Mamang Sabele and Sanya, Nichelu Satan Tilalele, No Mungaba Kuinya, Boto Sala is to put out Zamba and Bezo Beletua. Sas is a Tony Petinia Universe, Yahana Nisa, Siahana Nisa, Wanayega Yabu Fanti, Ula Lady, who failed. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, it's Kati. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, uh, in this time, I'd like to call upon Mamlinda's um, siblings, Zamogutle and Gutlegonke, and then also, I would also like the girls to also come up and they will speak um, afterwards. Hallelujah. If you can all just uh, come up together. Growing up, uh, I'll just repeat what I said the other day. Uh, as a child, I didn't particularly like my sister. I thought she was mean towards me, you know. Um, but I, I realized this because I was really annoying, too. So, and I remember a particular day where I did something to annoy her. And so she put guava juice all over my head. And I guess that speaks to the, 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 the puck in my sister. She was always ready to get down, be, especially for her family. And as I grew older, I got to see just how ferocious my sister's love was. Um, I, I was a bit of a handful growing up for my parents. <laughs> and when I got expelled, my sister was in Limbobo and she found the school that would take me in Mahugasgrove. 
And she arranged pretty much everything. And on weekends, I'd go and I'd live with her. And as time went by, I got to see just how much love my sister had. I mean, she gave me a car. That's, that's immense. You, you don't give people you don't like a car. So for her to just give me a car, no payments, nothing, spoke volumes. But I think the most memorable experience that I have with my sisters, there was a point where I had a mental breakdown. And I was, I was suicidal. It was very scary. And my sister was the one person that was there for me. She, she held my hand. She, she walked me through it and gave me the guidance and the strength to keep fighting. And so it's when I come through to my sister's place and Bonabantu and I'm asking myself, I realized that as much as my sister was so much to me, she was so much to everyone. And she gave of herself and she loved intensely. She loved with every fiber of her being. And I, I think to myself, if I, I look at her and I think as the woman she was, if I could be just half the man of that kind of energy, then I would have lived a very fulfilling life. Um, my heart breaks for my mother and my father. I'm tremendously apologetic and I'm so sorry that you guys have to go through this. You don't deserve this. But just know, Wuti, we are here for you. We love you. Make sure, Wuti, we can never fill her shoes, but we are here. We'll always be here. To these guys behind me, Mawadle, Belosh Mines, Didi, and Reggie. Again, guys, I'm so sorry for everything that you have gone through. To Reggie, I want to thank you for coming into my sister's life at the time that you did because when you came in, my sister had been going through a very difficult time in her life and you loved her. If there's one thing my sister could never question was the fact that she was loved. You loved her, and I am eternally grateful, grateful to you for that. You are forever my brother. You are our brother. No matter what happens. Because the, the happiness that you showed my sister, I'm just very grateful that in her passing moments, that is something that she never had to question. was just how intensely she was loved. To everybody that came to see her, to everybody that was here, thank you very much. And to my sister, until the next time, I love you. Well, thank God for technology because I fear that if I had to try and deliver the speech off the top of my head, the cogs of my mind might just slip. And I also prayed that Holy Spirit sees me through this delivery because I didn't envisage myself doing it without breaking down. So anyway, here we go. It was with great pain and reticence that I penned this short speech because it forced me to confront and to some degree accept the fact that my older sister is late. Part of my mind, admittedly, a large part seems to still be in denial. It all feels too surreal to be real. Everything happened so quickly and I've had an improbably short amount of time to process and emote. And I just hope that it's not going to find inappropriate expression on this platform. I self selfishly feel as if we were somehow robbed and that she was taken from us prematurely. And even so, that very word prematurely portends the inevitability of the end that we must all face. However, as believers, our hope lies not in the fallen world in this fallen world, in its distractions, trinkets, and accoutrements, but in Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the author and finisher of our faith, for whom, through whom, and by whom all things are created. Our trust rests in him and the eternal promise of our Father in heaven. As believers, we know that Lord Jesus secured victory for us on the cross and that death has truly lost its sting. It's not rhetoric to state 
the Tusbongile, or Linda, as many of you may know her, indeed lives. But in another body, one unlike the one that lays before us, that is incorruptible, and in a different dimension, one without time, one without disease, pain, and affliction. As bitter a pill as it may be to swallow, the peace in my heart truly does surpass understanding because it's not mine but Christ's. If I mourn, it's for myself and my loved ones that I mourn. If I cry, it's for myself that I cry. Grieving my loss, wishing for more time with her, but instead I choose to celebrate her life and most profoundly her attainment of the most precious treasure and, and eternity of God. If I claim to sincerely love her, why would I wish to prolong her pain and suffering in a, in a broken body? Why would I reasonably expect her to continue to live in anguish even though for us, in that pain, in that affliction, she would. When now she knows peace and joy unimaginable. So the question is, how do you accurately characterize and capture more than five decades of a life so richly lived and densely packed in a few brief minutes? And the short answer is that you can't. So at the risk of doing huge swathes of her life or horrible injustice, I'll give you some context and somewhat of a feel and flavor for the woman many of you know as Ulinda. My sister and womb mate was poised and elegant, yet strong and durable. She was soft, gentle and beautiful, but robust and hardy. Witty and wise, well beyond her years, smart and full of sage advice. She was an overachieving go-getter, a boardroom beast who pontificated with the best of them, but humble and unassuming enough to chill them again, Egas. Allow me to briefly transport you back in time to our shared childhood. I'm sure you saw snippets of us half naked in the living room there. Uh, our parents were visionaries who owned businesses in the township. My father of the Nkosi Dlamini clan was a precociously successful entrepreneur by his late 20s. He was the first businessman to have offices in the then prestigious and Lily White Carlton Center high rise in Johannesburg's bustling CBD, the first black South African member of the million dollar round table. My mom, a smart and savvy businesswoman in her own right, was a strict but doting mother and the daughter of one of the first ever black law graduates from this university. We were raised in a warm and loving home with my mom, the generous, loyal disciplinarian who brooked no nonsense and in charge of meeting out swift justice for ill discipline and disobedience. And my dad, the ever whistling, high work ethic having soft touch, particularly where his Linda Bird was concerned. Although admittedly the products of privilege like many of you present here today, we were always taught humility and empathy all of which were undergirded by a moral consciousness and a strong scale of values. Notwithstanding the politically fraught environment within which we grew, we were happy and for the most part carefree. I can vividly recall countless hours uh, with my sister spent re-watching our favorite film, Grease, obsessively memorizing our favorite new edition lyrics such as Candy Girl and Mr. Telephone Man. She would begrudgingly suffer through my favorite Betamax Kung Fu flicks after I broke yet another promise to hire something we can both watch and enjoy. Following a raunchy love scene between Bobby and Sue Ellen, the folks forbade us from watching Dallas and refusing to be denied, we devised a plot to huddle out of sight on the fridge freezer in the kitchen in order to be within earshot of the TV, yet remain unseen. We would snuggle on the couch in winter, indulging our fantasies of one day living lives similar to the ones portrayed on Heart to Heart, Dynasty, Falcon Crest, Magnum PI, and Chips, which were our weekly favorites. And sometimes homework has to be prioritized second <laughs> when these iconic shows were on. Weekends were reserved for extramural school activities, out of town roller skating competitions, much anticipated visits to either one of my grandmother's homes, Komletzani, MDNI, and Etladi where we connected with my sister's twin, Malindis, and our younger cousin, Omtandaz, or AKA Tazi, and much later as well. Uh, and Mletani with my cousins there too, or simply for having living room dance-off back battles at the homestead on the polished parquet floors, rushing to the bathroom in a feeble attempt to make up our beds, get out of our PJs, wash and be presentable in the five minutes it took my mom to park the car and get into the house. I vividly recall playing circus tightrope on the bath's edge when Ma unexpectedly walked into the bathroom, catching our little bodies in the act, frozen on the spot. She gave us her signature, you are now about to reap the whirlwind look. Quietly exited, and just when we thought we had 
gotten away with it and we're off the hook, kicked the door in like a sheriff in a western and proceeded to give us the hiding of our lives. I used my sister as a shield whilst proceeding to scream the loudest. She courageously took the stripes for both of us only to comfort me afterwards when it was her who bore the brunt of the beating. You see, I never had an older brother. Nor did I wish to have one. Because as far back as I can remember, my sister was my bodyguard and protector. And this was most starkly illustrated. You know, my kids have never seen me cry as I'm trying to keep a clean sheet here, you know? Um, this was most starkly illustrated on one fateful day when I had a run-in with one eponymously named Lucky Lithania. <laughs> this was no misnomer, like a big guy whose sobriquet is tiny or something. <laughs> oh no, Lucky was seriously mentally unstable. <laughs> After being publicly embarrassed by Lucky and his ragtag crew by throwing an orange peel at my face, I remember running home in tears to inform my sister, who spontaneously and unquestioningly grabbed me by the hand and marched me back to the scene of the incident in, to, in order to avenge my indignity. Upon arrival, not a word uttered, she delivered a stinging slap across Lucky's battle-scarred face in full view of all his friends. Lucky paused for a second or two, as if gathering guile from his heel, and repaid the favor with compound interest, shocking all of us who witnessed the saga. Safe to say, following that unfortunate episode, my sister and I prudently gave Lucky his space and generally avoided his haunts and favorite hangouts. That notwithstanding, very event firmly cemented, that very event firmly cemented in my mind at least, my sister as my superhero. We would often fight like cat and dog and make up with fits of laughter shortly thereafter as if nothing had ever happened. On one occasion, fancying ourselves as young entrepreneurs and having some lived experience, we decided to open a hair salon at the back of our home. After all, we had all the amenities, two times outdoor concrete sinks, check, cheap little known hair straightener from local cafe and one large tub of Vaseline, some plastic gloves and combs, check. With that, we were open for business. We would, gener would generously lather the foreheads and ears of our customers with Vaseline and proceed to apply the product, straighten, wash, collect the cash, simple. <laughs> that was, of course, until one sunny afternoon when one of us, I conveniently can't recall now who it was, used too much product on the head of a customer, resulting in the poor eight-year-old girl, a neighbor, having huge patches of hair loss, leaving her looking like a middle-aged male suffering from advanced alopecia. Fearing for our lives and in a vain attempt to obscure our faux pas, we clumsily placed the loose clusters of hair back on her head, sprayed the sweet-smelling sheen, quickly flashed the mirror in front of her face from side to side and bundled her off, all the while strongly exhorting her not to touch her hair until the following day for fear of ruining it. This one, we said, was on the house. <laughs> Suffice to say, we closed shop early that day and our little startup shut its doors just as quickly as we had opened them. Swangile was incredibly popular with schoolmates in the township at Varsity. In fact, wherever she went, she was somewhat of a township celebrity and I was often astonished by just how many people knew her or of her. For the longest time, my claim to fame was being Mwana Wahabolin. She know that principle. We would grow old and she would move to The Hague to study and I to Cape Town for the same reason. Not long thereafter, however, she returned home with a bun, and I'm not talking about baked goods. And uh, shortly thereafter, Mawatle, aka Nando's, her firstborn was born. She would be and mother three more precious souls, Bielu, Muntati, and Didi, who would forever change her for the better. I'm convinced that it was in large part to the fervent and effectual prayers of my sister and others like her that I am forever indebted to her. While some timorously tiptoed into the world, my sister dived in headfirst as if swimming a 50 meter at a school gala with every intent to win. This life fully as one who must have known in her spirit that she only had little over half a century within which to pack two lifetimes worth of living. Belying that sweet voice, regal and gentle demeanor was a fierce and protective lioness ready to throw caution to the wind in defense of those she loved. She had a ready toothy smile as if to show off her perfect teeth, a cute and endearing little dimple just below her right eye 
which made a frequent appearance when she was pleased, smiling, or laughing sincerely. I could regale you all day long with countless anecdotes, but I'd like to bookend my speech with the following. Romans 8.18 reads thus, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I'd like to thank you all. I have much more of a speech, but you know, in the interest of brevity, I just want to say that my sister was all about God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, and was empowered by the Holy Spirit. I say this not because she was my sister, but because of her fruit, and by the fruit you shall know them. Behold the fruit. Thank you. speech a bit short because there's not enough time but I'll be quick. My mom was someone different to a lot of people. A daughter, a wife, a niece, a sister, aunt, a friend, pastor. To me she is the most beautiful woman inside and out. She's loving and inspiring and intelligent, a bit needy and noble dedicated and delicate, admirable, and she was my best friend, and I will never know anyone like her again. I will make you even more proud, mommy, whatever that means. Um, I just want to address mom and dad. I'm so sorry. I love you, and no words, no actions, and nothing could ever help repair your broken hearts. But I also want to thank you for bringing into this world my mom who will continue to live through me and through everyone else. I pray that you find the comfort in the Lord and know that we are all here for you. Love you guys. Jesus Christ, my mother's risen savior, my risen savior. Um, I wrote a speech, but I'm not going to read it in the interest of time. This is a blessing. I'm gonna really miss my mother. She was a visionary, she was a queen, she was a gem, a royal diadem. Um, I'm devastated, my heart is broken that my mom is not here. But so many people are here and that's just testament to the woman that she was and will continue to be as she lives on, you know, her legacy will really live on. I'm so grateful for the life that she lived, the teachings, the things she left us. She's endowed us with so much knowledge and wisdom and just everything. I'm so grateful to the people who've comforted us in this time. Um, Greeting my family members, my colleagues, my friends, my mom's primary school friends and just everyone who is here, the Ngosis, the Mamalos, the Mamabolos, the Mpurus. Thank you so much. Um, This is a sad time, but we give honor and glory to Christ because he is worthy of all praise and we will be fine. (laughs) We will be fine. We will be fine. Our peace is still and the Lord leads us beside still waters and greener pastures. Um, Thank you so much for coming more than anything. My mom was a princess. She was my best friend. She taught me so much. I will always remember our chats. Um, I prayed with her. I'm grateful that I did her hair and made her tea and massaged her body and her feet and all these things. I'm done. First and foremost, there's so many of you here, so I just want to say thank you very much for coming. My mom would be so happy to see you all. Um, I don't have much time, so I want to address my grandparents first and foremost. Mom and Dad, um, I'm very sorry that you've lost your firstborn and your only daughter, your darling Lady Bird. Parents are not supposed to bury their kids, so I understand that this is a unique pain. Ma, you've always called me the last spawn, so I want you to know that you're not alone and that we're here with you, okay? To my siblings, as your eldest, I want to say that, Bello, you embody the grace and beauty that my mother had. 
so effortlessly. And Tati continued to be her pride and joy. And to my youngest brother, Didi, you're the reason that mommy woke up and fought every day. And you gave a very distinct and special reason to live. I know that we have a difficult journey ahead of us and I'm sorry that mommy will never get to see you rise above your circumstances. In this story, I do think it's fair to say that you've been dealt a hard one and I'm so sorry because you deserve so much more and then some. But with that being said, I want to need you to know that mommy loved you more than almost everything to see you alive today. I promise to continue in her footsteps by protecting you and you guys and watching over all of you as if you're my own. I know that this is a confusing time for all of us, but I want you guys to know that mommy loved you guys. And I'm very glad that my mom is resting peacefully because she was in a lot of pain. I take comfort and solace in knowing that she is with the Lord above. And I take comfort and solace in knowing that in her last days, she was shown so much love. She was shown so much love. So thank you to everybody who came, who called, who visited, and who texted. Um, I love my mother dearly. She prepared me for this day, but she didn't prepare me to miss her for the rest of my life. But we will be okay because my mother taught me that God is with us all the time. And to my dad, to my dad, Reginald I want to say you love my mother so ferociously, but you handled her with gentleness and the kindness that she deserves. And I'm so grateful to you for loving her the way that you did and for loving us. And I know that we have a journey ahead of us, but this ship will continue to sail with you as our captain. So I love you very, very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Bangwil. Um, it's cutting some manger, and it's time I'd like to call upon Apostle Mwale. Hallelujah. Uh, for a sermon. Hallelujah. Amen. Adam Shelley Zantla Sasugum. Hallelujah. If I could sing. Bengam Sugum is an engoma, but the Lord has not blessed me with a singing voice, so. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry. Uh, whoever is driving, uh, sorry, uh, a silver Bentley um, license, uh, double J51 NYGP, could you please kindly move your car? The hearse wants to park in. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm conflicted. Reggie emphatically stated, you have 45 minutes. When I got here, uh, Nati will speak. They have all spoken everything I wanted to say. And every song that I wanted sung has been sung. And the time is gone. And I'm being told right here on the podium, you have exactly five minutes. <laughs> now, I, I, want, I want you to understand what I'm going through. Linda was my friend, and I wanted to say something about her too. But I think that I want to borrow, even if it's in the next five minutes, I want to borrow my sermon from the title of the book she compiled. I saw God move. When times are like this, you get to wonder, where is God when it hurts? Where is God when it hurts? What happens 
when the situation seems hopeless and helpless. How do we get past this situation? How do we get beyond the pain that we face? I just thought before we leave here today, I should speak on behalf of Linda and say we shall continue to see God move in our lives. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the pain, regardless of what we might be faced with today, God has not stopped moving. He continues to move in our lives. When it hurts, he is still God and is enthroned on high. He is still God in our lives. He is still God in this house. He is still God in every situation that we might be faced with. And he continues to move even when we can feel like he's moving. Even when we feel like nothing is going on. He is still on the move. God is moving even during the times of pain. As it hurts, I would like to speak to the family and say that you see, as you're going through pain and you don't seem to know just how you're going to get out of this situation. Turn on your faith. Put on your lenses of faith and look up to God because he is still moving even when it doesn't feel like anything is taking place. He is there. The psalmist David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He does. No one knows the depth of your soul than God. Nobody will ever understand the depth of the pain that you're going through than God. And the best place to be at this moment is to hang into the hands of the master and let him walk you through this moment. And so David continues to say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear any evil. Why? Because you are with me. He recognizes that God continues to move. God continues to restore. God continues to heal our lives even when we go through the most challenging times in our lives. The Bible says we walk not by sight but by faith. We walk by faith not by sight. And we know and we are fully persuaded that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And because now Linda has ascended and she has transitioned, she has actually transcended and she now resides in a dimension where all things are possible. She now resides in a dimension where nothing can hurt hurt her or give her pain. She lives in that dimension, the dimension that we long for so much, each one of us. I want us not to end on this side of life. Life has continued on the other side uh, of eternity. So we do not move by sight, we move by faith. And by faith we understand that she has transitioned and she's in a better place. And these are not just words to make us feel better. It is the reality of all of us that await for his coming. It is the reality for all of us that believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And so, where is God when it hurts? He continues to move. He's right beside you. He's always there. He says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you until the end of time. His promises, they are yes and in him they are amen. And so I would like you to understand that he is there. He's always there. He has always been there. And I would like us to, uh, just at this point, allow the person that is doing the obituary to come to the front before we pray.
Hallelujah. Sorry. I'm praying for songs and hymns. Okay. Time we'll ask who uh Bob goes to read uh Pops' letter to mom and then Funesi will pray afterwards. Thanks. And you will understand when I do this. Amen. Um, yeah, um, I'm here to... In the place of the one half of Linda. the feelings, the thoughts of the other half. Um, your ginger big eyes and gorgeous smile melted my heart forever. Our paths diverged for two decades and converged again on the 28th, April 2010. The rest is history. I am sad that you will not be at my first book launch next month or the ordination of pastors that we have groomed over the years. I take comfort in knowing that your legacy lives on. Thank you for date nights at your favorite restaurant the Mozambican, along with the saucy ribs and prawns. I will forever cherish our good times in Thailand and elsewhere. Thank you for making our home miss your Christmas meal, roasted duck, roasted lamb, etc., etc. Thank you for the gift of love. You floated my boat. I thrived in your arm. And uh, as we proceed, uh, the JMPD has asked that we will follow them and be in between the two cars. Hallelujah. Don't go ahead or anything. They will guide us. Hallelujah. And then when we come back, lunch will be here at the church. Hallelujah. Um, amen. And so also as we proceed, please also let the family God first and then we shall also uh, follow them. Amen. Amen.
worthy, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. 